If you're looking for a portable power station but not sure which one to get, in this video I'm going to go over the Explorer 160, 240, and 300. I'm going to give you the features and specs of each one, and hopefully by the end of the video I've given you enough information to help you decide which one might be the right one for you. Portable power means you're going to carry them somewhere, somehow. Maybe in a backpack, maybe in your car. That means they need to be small, compact, and lightweight. So just for size comparison, I have a $5 bill just to kind of show you a comparison of what each one is. Now the 240 and the 300 are really close to the same size. But if you're looking for the most lightweight and compact, you'd be looking at the Explorer 160. It's quite a bit smaller than the other two. Looking at the end for the size comparison, the 300 is just ever so slightly wider than the 240. And the 160 is quite a bit narrower than the 240 or 300. And of course, being a portable power unit, you're concerned with some weight. You're looking at seven pounds, six pounds, four pounds. Now, depending on what type of devices you're gonna plug into these, like this 12 volt cigarette lighter adapter, the Jackery 160 does not have it. It only has your USB and your AC plug. So if you have something that uses one of these, like this old GPS, you're simply going to plug it in right here, hit the green button to turn your DC on, and now you have power. So the 240 and the 300 have those adapters, but the 160 does not. Alright, to give you guys some idea about capacity, right now I'm using the Explorer 160. I've got my cell phone plugged in and charging. I've got dual GoPro batteries charging. And I have behind me the string of 12 LED bulbs lit up by the Jackery 160. And if we take a look, we're running about 80 watts, which is about 80% capacity of the Jackery 160. And here's a close-up of the output of the GoPro batteries, the cell phone, and the 12 LED bulbs. Capacity demo on the 240, I can add this old GPS. I had this laying around so I can plug into the 12 volt outlet here. I've got the dual GoPro batteries, my cell phone, and the 12 LED bulbs lit up. Now, it's only putting out about 83 watts and out of 200, so we're not even at 50% capacity on the Jackery Explorer 240. Now on the Jackery Explorer 300, I've got the GPS running, I've got the dual GoPro batteries charging, cell phone charging, I've got cords everywhere. Right here I've got my laptop running and this cord right here is powering the 12 LED bulbs. I'll zoom in so we can check the wattage output. I believe we're right around 120 watts but this thing's rated for 300 so it's not even making this thing work. There are some cooling fans in here so when you're you know getting close to max load you're going to hear the cooling fan kick on. Well, once the Jackery hit about 80 watts, the cooling fan kicked on uh, just a little bit. It's pretty quiet, but I could hear it. Now the Explorer 300, I've got all this stuff plugged in. The cooling fan is not even on yet. And as my laptop kind of ramps up and down, the wattage is changing a little bit, but we're right around 93 watts output. So I'm just going to show you an input measurement. Now I have the AC adapter plugged in to the AC in. So it's actually charging the Jackery Explorer 160. And you can see that the charge adapter is pushing in 62 watts of power. Now if you were to hook up a solar panel, you would hook it up to the jack underneath to the 12 volt. And then that's how you could tell how much power output you're getting out of your solar panel. Let's say you're going to use one of these for recharging GoPro batteries and cell phones. All three have two USB adapters. You simply plug it in, you're going to hit your USB on button, and that's going to start your charging. You can't just plug anything into these and then have it automatically start working. You have to initiate the button, whether it's DC or AC, in order to turn on the power. If you just plug it in like an outlet in your home, nothing's going to happen. Now these are also kind of considered emergency power banks. Well, if that's the case, that usually means that you've lost all electricity and you have no lights. A lot of people have cell phones and you can use the flashlight off of that. But, only the Explorer 160 has a light on it. 
for some reason, the 240 and 300, they did not put a light in those. So that's another difference in this little compact unit. Several devices that you need to use an AC outlet for, like this one right here to my laptop. Simply plug it in, initiate the button, and now my laptop has power. The 300 has two of these outlets. The 240 has one, and the 160 just has one outlet plug here on the end. All three of these units can be recharged with a solar panel. Simply plug it into the DC input, and it's going to automatically start recharging. Now if you have about a 100 watt solar panel, on a nice day at a perfect angle, you're going to get about 53 to 58 watts out of that solar panel, and each one of these is going to take about seven hours to recharge. Me personally, I would rather just buy another one of these than to buy another solar panel. Solar panel kit's going to run around $130, $140 for a good one, and you can just pick up another one of these for $130. Bucks. So why lug around a 24 inch square solar panel that weighs about 15 pounds, and you can just add another one of these for the same price. And all three units pretty much have the same digital display. Simply hit the button, it will tell you how many watts are going in, going out, depending on if you're charging with a solar panel or an AC adapter. And whatever you have plugged into it, it will tell you how many watts it's using. Like the lights behind me, when I plug those in, it tells me they're using about 60 watts of power. Now all three have pretty much the exact same display. Uh, there's really no advantage from the cheaper one to the more expensive one. It does not give you any more information. So the names can be a little deceiving. This is the Explorer 160. You might think it puts out 160 watts. It does not. It puts out 100 watts continuous. The Explorer 240. You might think it puts out 240 watts. It does not. It puts out 200 watts continuous. Now the Explorer 300 does put out 300 watts continuous. Now we need to talk about peak surge watts. You're looking at 150 peak surge. 400 peak surge, 500 watts peak surge. Now how long does it take to recharge each one of these? Once these go dead, they obviously need to be recharged by AC or DC. For the little Explorer 160, you're looking at three and a half hours AC. The 240, you're at five and a half hours AC. And the 300, you're at six and a half hours AC. We know that these can power lots of different devices. This one here can actually power a little mini refrigerator. But let's say you bought this to recharge your laptop or cell phone while you're out camping, hunting, hiking, things of that nature. To recharge a cell phone, you can recharge 16 times. That's from 20% to 80%. 24 times on the 240 and 30 times on the 300. You want to use these to recharge your GoPro batteries. 30 times, 40 times, and 50 times. That you want to recharge your laptop. It's going to depend a little bit whether you have a HP Chromebook or a MacBook. But on average, you're looking at recharging from 20% to 80%, two times, three times, and four times. It's February of 2023, and these things are the highest price I've ever seen. 139, 249, and 299. Now you can catch them on sale, or a lot of times I'll see that clipped coupon. I have seen this one for $80 off before, so keep a sharp eye to catch these on sale. Let's say you're out in the woods shooting a lot of drone footage and you want to use these to recharge your drone batteries. You're looking at three times, four times, five times. If you want to continuously run a laptop, you're looking at 14 hours, 18 hours, and 24 hours. Now, I don't think this would happen a lot, but let's say you drug along a small 32 inch TV out into your campsite. You wanted to watch a late night movie. This one I would not recommend plugging a TV into. This one here you're going to run about three hours. This one here you're going to run about four and a half hours. So two questions remain. How many times can you recharge these power packs? Well the manufacturer says approximately 500 recharge cycles. Doesn't matter if you charge it with a solar panel or the AC adapter. It's just 500 recharge cycles. I imagine it might just weaken. It's not just going to stop working. Also, can I plug in my cell phone, let that charge, while I plug in the power pack and charge it? Yes and no. 
Manufacturer says it's not healthy for the battery to be recharging your power station and charging or powering another device. So while your power station is being recharged, I recommend you don't plug anything else into it until you unplug it. These are very handy little units to have either in the home or auto or campsite. You can keep a small one maybe in the trunk of your car or back of your SUV just for emergencies. Some of these larger ones you might want to keep in your home to power something during an emergency outage. Hopefully I gave you guys enough information to make a, a good judgment call on which one of these might be the best for you. Hope you guys found this video helpful and informational and thanks for watching.